Sorry, I just want to do something oh, really, that's okay. really Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Screenshots. Look, look attractive. Oh. Mm. <laughs> you look good. Okay, good. Obviously, anybody who listened to last week is, I'm sure, going, God, I got to follow this Kate Toon chick because she's pretty darn cool. And I'm here to say, yes, she is. But I'm really interested in talking to you about something that I've seen you kind of teasing out in the marketplace a little bit. And I just don't know enough about it. And that is what I think you're calling Be More Shark. Uh, that, that sounds like a, a big clarion call with, you know, the uh, winter is coming, the Lannisters pay their debts, and Kate Toon's house words are Be More Shark. What does that actually mean, Be More Shark? Oh, I'm going to get I'm going to get shields with sharks on ripping things <laughs> open. Be more shark. There's a there's a meme on online which is like, do sharks worry about Monday morning? Do they worry about what people are saying about them? No, they just go around being a effing shark and living life. Do you know what I mean? It, I've, yep. I've not. Yep. I should learn that a bit better. But it's basically about being fearless in business, not necessarily being brave, because that's kind of a bit different to being fearless. Fearless is more me. I don't think I'm necessarily brave, but I think I'm fearless in that I just Try stuff, try and fail, fail fast. You know, how you deal with the imposter syndrome, the comparisonitis, the insecurity, and, you know, your competitors and all of that, and still do the thing, still turn up every day, even when things go wrong. And I had a huge experience this year of just being absolutely terrified about something and having to work through that and do the thing. And I was like, how did, how did I do that? Because it was a huge event for me. And I thought, other people might need to know this. So that's why Be More Shark came about. It's going to be a book. It's the next series of my podcast. And as I said, I will have T-shirts and shields available for purchase. <laughs> your, your sigil is a shark, a tiger shark, or a great, no, you're from Australia. So great it's got to be a great white. Absolutely. The queen of the seas. So that's very cool. When you say a book, when are you expecting to get the book out? I'm hoping to have that out by May. So actually what I'm doing with my podcast is, again, to try and get a book written is incredibly difficult. We know this. Producing content for social media is hard. Producing punk podcasts is hugely hard. So I thought I would cheat. And I'm using the podcast as kind of the fact-finding mission for the book. So I'm interviewing 12 different psychologists on different types of fear. Smart. And then I'm going to introduce business people. And one of them is going to be D.P. Knutton. He doesn't know it yet because I haven't Ooh, asked him. Well, about, you have now and I'm saying, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're going to be talking about fears that people have faced and how they've overcome them to try and put together like a, basically what I do, want to do is put together like a, a, a plan of how to overcome fear. Like what can you do? What practical steps can you take? And that will then, I will cogitate all of that, mix it around in a pot, and then spit it out as a, as a book. So yeah, the, the series will be a precursor to the book. Obviously, it will also help get people excited about the book, but it will, it's my fact-finding mission because I kind of know what I want to say, but I'm a big believer in asking cleverer people than me what they think, and I want to incorporate their, other people's stories as well because I love reading stories of triumph. We all love the hero's journey. We all love, I was here, this happened, this was bad, and then I, now I'm here. And I think the big important thing with fear is it's not something you ever overcome. Like you never stop being scared, but you learn how to manage that fear and channel it and use it to drive you to do more things. So that's kind of the basic message of Be More Sharp. Well, that is so smart. And, you know, it's always been a content creation uh, killer ninja tip to say, the best thing you can do is get other people to write your stuff or to give you their thing. So I'm imagining, correct me if I'm wrong, that as you do this podcast, you're going to get transcriptions of those podcasts, do a little bit of editorial cleanup. And then a lot of those sections are going to find their way into your book as meaty sections from meaningful people that can provide a whole lot of credibility building for you amongst their networks. Because here's the thing, if you talk to person A who's flying at 50,000 feet and you, you're flying at 25,000 feet, guess what? You are flying at 50,000 feet because you're talking to them. And then all the people who are hanging out with them at 50,000 feet see you as a new member of that flock and they accept you because, well, if you're good enough for a person who's flying at 50,000 feet A, you're good enough for me. So it, it's very much people 
hang out with people they're impressed with, that they enjoy, that they respect, that they find valuable. And then I'm looking right next to them to find out who they're hanging out with. Because if they pass muster with you, I want to get to know that. And, you know, it, in the worst case, it's a Machiavellian uh, mercenary technique that is poorly done by a thousand different people on LinkedIn every single day. In the best case, it's a fantastic killer trick and tip and hack and shortcut to get you to meet the right people and bring them into your network. And from what you're saying, give you meaningful content for your book. Now, I know you enough to know you aren't just going to pull quotes and not add to it. You're going to riff off what they're talking about in a huge way, adding a lot of your Kate Tune value to whatever they have to say and share. Yeah, exactly. And a real important point that I'd like to make though there is that I am never somebody that reaches up to people who I think are at 50,000 feet. I know that sounds weird. Um, I want to be around people who are at the 20,000, 25,000 feet. So I'm not going to be knocking on Amy Porterfield's door and asking if she'll be interviewed for this podcast because I don't know Amy Porterfield. She's right. amazing. She's great. But that would be, for me, insincere. Like I could go out there and I could say, hey, look, I'm going to get Richard Branson and you know Mark Burris in Australia and all these big names to try and elevate my name. That's just very unauthentic Kate Toon. So what I'm going to do is interview people who are, I think kind of at my level that are awesome and that maybe Australian audiences don't know about. Because I think for me, especially with a book like this is teaching you about fear. I don't relate to Richard Branson. You yeah. know, he's a gazillion billionaire. His whole life story is different. But if I see another, you know, 40 year old woman who's got a couple of kids, who's managed to you know, maybe not create a giant empire, but she's done really, really well. She's like two steps away from me rather than like Beyonce is 20 steps away from me. Right. It just seems too aspirational. So I just, I keep it a little bit low. Let's say 30,000 feet. I'm a 30,000 30, feet. And also I want to bring people up too. So the psychologists I'm interviewing, they're not famous psychologists. They're right. working, they're working psychologists whose opinion is just as valid. And for me, that creates more of a a village effect. You know, it takes a village to grow, to raise a family. It takes a village to grow a business. And all of us have as much to get out of the project as each other. Whereas if I get Amy Porterfield on, maybe I'm trying to limp it on her fame, but she's not going to share my book because she's interviewed all the time. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm picking on poor Amy Porterfield. She's marvelous, but do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, and I really appreciate the fact that you, that you're kind of taking the technique I was talking about and brand aligning it with who you actually are. Because yeah. here's the thing, you know, like, yeah, you write a book and you've got, you're talking to a Mark Zuckerberg and Beyonce and Richard Branson and, you know, Jane Fonda and Kylie Minogue and you name it. And you're like, number one, yeah, Kate, I know you don't hang out with those people. You know, I, I maybe they did it for you, but I love the fact that you're curating people who have tremendous value perhaps are a little bit underknown because here's the thing that benefits you. If, if you help them achieve a uh, greater notoriety, better uh, awareness or whatever, they now appreciate you to death mm. and it's attainable. It's like attainable greatness, not unobtainable greatness. You just described it so much better than me. Attainable greatness, not unobtainable. And also flip it. For example, when I introduced you to my clever copywriting community, like the, the joy that they got out of discovering you and most of them then went on to follow you on LinkedIn and blah, blah, blah. It was a gift to them. Yes, it was a gift to you, but it was a really gift to them. And I think that's important to me as well. You know, that I don't, I'm not writing this book to pop it on uh, Amazon for free to get one Amazon bestseller spot for half an hour. I'm writing this book because I genuinely want to write a good book and I want it to be useful. And I want it to be helpful. So it's not an ego bait thing. Yes, it's a branding exercise. Yes, it gives me new things to talk about at events and on podcasts. I need that. You know, I'm, I'm a bit over talking about SEO and copywriting. I want some, a new story to tell. The example I always use, I've got two more important things to say. Imagine being Britney Spears and every time you go to a concert, everyone says, can you please sing Toxic? And she's yeah. like, I wrote that song 20 years ago. Do I have to keep singing it? Well, that's a little bit how I feel about SEO and I shouldn't bite the hand that feeds me because it's huge for me, as you saw from the pie chart. And the other thing I wanted to say, which was super important, is I do hang out with Kylie Minogue. 
There's a guy called There's a guy called Graham Norton. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen yeah, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love Graham Norton. And, and he has this thing called the red chair where he puts people in and they fall backwards. Right. I was the original red chair. I was Are you the kidding? Fired, and it's on YouTube, DP, so I'll have to send it to you. Oh, my God. Because, you know, okay, so Graham Norton is a, a UK talk show host. And the kind of ongoing bit they do is they, they have someone in a room. From, yeah, that's, from the audience. Right, yeah. from the audience. They put them in a red chair. And they'll ask a question or half the time they don't get to ask the question before they're ejected from the chair backwards, I think. And oh no, Graham Norton's in my Facebook clip feed all the me time. Too, me too, me too. I'll send you the clip. I was on you the were the, You were the, you buried the lead right there. You I were the original it. red chair on Graham Norton. And you know Holy what he called me, DP? He called what? me that show gold. Oh my gosh. Why is that not on your website? I, I've, you know what? I'm going to take a note, DP, but by the end of the day, that's going to be on my website. It should be because it encapsulates, it captures perfectly exactly who you are, which is kind of zany, British with the admixture that is Kate Toon of Sydney, Australia. <laughs> it's all summed up in a clip that I cannot wait to see. This episode of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast is brought to you by Nonfiction Brand Versity. It's a free Facebook group dedicated to the art and craft of personal branding. And we'd like to invite you. Just search Nonfiction Brand Versity on Facebook and ask to join. You're in, guaranteed. I can't wait to see you on campus. I want to go back to Be More Shark because I'm really excited about it because I'll be honest with you. I was just at something today here in Madison, Wisconsin, where I live. And it was a really great event, majority female. At the end of it, when it came to Q&A time, of all the questions asked, the majority were from older white men. And believe me, I'm sitting there and I have things I want to say, and I'm not saying them because I'm like, uh, I have a house full of women here, so I'm very aware of the fact that, no, you've got to let other people talk. So I'm literally going, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't ask the question, don't ask the question. Somebody asked come on, there's dead air here, you know? And one of the things I hate is dead air. But there was a room full of people who were not shark. They were, for whatever reason, they were sitting on their hands. They weren't getting out there. Is part of your goal of the book to get people to recognize that maybe they aren't shark, but they need to become shark? Yeah. And I mean, obviously sharks are seen as quite vicious, horrible creatures, but they're actually not. They're lovely. So I'll explain. I have to explain the shark thing in the book. Yeah. It's just the, you know, the biggest things that we worry about. Uh, we all want to be liked. Uh, you know, we all want people to appreciate us. Nobody wants to look stupid. And I think we also all have this sort of scarcity model, whereas we, we're happy with what we've got and we're so frightened of losing what we've got, whether that's face or, you know, actual physical things that we don't want to reach for anything else, because we, we end up in, and this works quite well, it's like a surfer position where you're reaching out for this thing over here and you're going to have to let go of something over there. So you could reach out to, you know, have more of a public profile, but you have to let go of, of your private profile. You know, you can reach out to be a speaker, but then what are you letting go of to be a speaker? You can reach out to launch a thing, but then you're going to have to let go of maybe having day-to-day -day clients. You know, there's always an exchange. And I think, you know, it's a lot about mindset and, you know, being brave and not feeling good enough, especially for women, I think, but less men too. But yeah, I want people to just appreciate that it's, it is doable. You know, these things that you see other people doing, they, they took steps to get there. They didn't go from here to here. Some people do. Some people are born with amazing confidence. I wasn't. And it's been a process. And I just want to illustrate that process. So even if you can move one step forward, it's still... You're maybe doing a few of the things that you really want to do and you stop holding yourself back. You stop sitting on your hand at the event and you actually put your hand up and don't be scared if people think your question is stupid because there are no stupid questions. Well, here's the reality. Every event I've ever been at and when I got over my fear of raising my hand or, or making a statement or asking a question, every single time someone comes up afterwards saying, I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to ask it, but I was mm, fill in the blank. The bottom line is I wasn't shark enough. Yes. So be more shark. Be more shark. Well, that, that's so cool. So uh, the book, you're looking to get it out in 2020. Yeah. What time frame? 
I reckon June. So the podcast will launch in probably January. And I'm trying to do a bit of a different approach with the podcast. I want it to be more narrative, which obviously helps me write the book. So, you know, it's not going to be straight interview, interview, interview. I want to do the interviews and then I want to slice it into a story. So more reply all this American life with a story Mm -hmm. as as an arc and then snippet of talk in that. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is going to take a lot more effort from my point of view to produce that. And and, because, you know, putting together shows that you have to edit a lot, we know they take a lot of time. Right. The process of crafting those episodes will get me a step closer to having a crafted chapter. So pretty much each episode of the podcast will relate to a chapter. Not exactly, because I don't basically want the podcast to be an audible version of the book. Right. But it will help me in that journey because crafting a book is hard. You know, it's not just putting the stuff in. You have to really have an arc and a story and a structure. Um, and I really want this to be a good one, you know, yeah. not, that my, not that my first book wasn't great, but in reality, it was a collection of blog posts glued together with an intro and an outro. And I want this to be a bit of an evolution for my own personal satisfaction, <laughs> to be honest, you know. No, it, it makes total sense because as you continue to, to develop as a talent, as a writer, as a thought leader, if you want to use that term. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about you is that complacency is not a happy place for you. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're as lazy as everybody is on individual days, but then there's a day where you go, you know what? I'm not happy with where I am. I want to take this to the next level. Yeah, it's that itchy, itchy pants feeling, but in a positive way, you know, sand in your pants in a kind of a different way. I think it's the human condition to, I don't want to be always be like, what next, what next, what next? Like I do now take more time to appreciate achievements and go, well done, you did that pat yourself on the back, take a breath. And I'm also much better at making sure that the things I'm doing are fit my business model, fit my goals, rather than I'm just doing them as a reaction to a competitor or because my ego has taken over for the day. So I'm getting more mature, I think, DP, which is, hope, which is a good thing. But yes, onwards and upwards. There's so many exciting things to do. I've got a million ideas. I just need the time to do them. And there is time because, you know, I'm going to be doing this until I'm an old gray woman. Hey, nonfiction branders. Did you know I wrote a book? Well, I did, and it's called Rotoma, the ROI of social media top of mind. I wrote it with my colleague, Spencer X. Smith, and it's all about Rotoma, an acronym that means return on top of mind awareness. Best-selling author and NYU Stern School of Business professor Scott Galloway called it a book that starches the fluff from social media and helps managers allocate capital and find the unicorn among unicorns, ROI. And chief content officer at Marketing Pro, Anne Handley said, this isn't just a practical way to think about the return on social media. It's also a spot on accurate way to reframe your social efforts. Check out all the five star reviews on Amazon by searching Rotoma, R-O-T-O-M-A. Pick up your copy today and start building your personal, professional and small business brand the Rotoma way. Here's the thing. I want to go back to the foundation of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast, which is all about helping people and small businesses, or I will say small businesses, guess what? You're a personal brand. If you have under 50 employees, you're still a personal brand. Embrace the the Jesus out of that. If you do that, you now have the power to do whatever is aligned with your personal brand. And personal branding, I see a lot of hucksters out there that are kind of like, here's a framework. Here's a fill in the blank thing. Here's a blah, 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 blah. Do what I did exactly this way. And you'll be a personal brand just like I am. And I'm like, "Eh, dude, it's not that that difficult. And it's certainly not that programmatic. It needs to be a, a very focused thing as you look at who you are, what you do and how you do it. Actually write it down on paper and do what you did with kind of your, uh, how you, your business works thing, which is I've always intuited this, or I, I, I know the chronology of it, but I never connected the dots. There's a fantastic Steve Jobs. I, I think he did a commencement speech at Stanford and he talks about, you can't see the dots until you turn around and you connect them. Well, part of that sitting down now and, and say to yourself, Who am I? What do I like to do? What do people appreciate about what I do? And figure that out. Because let's face it, if someone's telling you the thing you need to do is a podcast and a video series, and you've got a face for not even radio, or you don't feel comfortable doing it, do not waste your time. 
Yeah. Don't try to copy someone else. Find your original you. But and to it do that, it. yeah, it, changes it will develop. Time. It will yeah. develop. Human beings are not like uh, monarch butterflies that go from total phase changes from I was a thing that looks like a caterpillar and now I'm a butterfly. No, we're, we, aren't, we don't have those types of phase changes. There is always a through line there. The question is, have you identified the through line or the, the, the primary elements of who you are, what you do and how you do it? You have done that. You have talked about that a little bit with the fact that you embrace the strategically silly side and make it a core part of your business. Everything you do is based on the written word and its products. You know, you're talking about the fact that your new podcast is going to be the written word and a podcast and other things that are a new step forward for you. So you're not going from Kate Toon the Caterpillar to Kate Toon the Butterfly. You're just continuing your evolution. Exactly. And sometimes you need to return to the cocoon and spend a bit of time there and remember, you know, who you are and what you are, because it's very easy to get lost in this busy social media world and, you know, seeing what everyone does and lose your sense of self and yeah. lose what you care about. And I think it's really important every now and again to take a step back and go back to the cocoon and go, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't want to do that anymore. And that's okay because I'm a personal brand and my brand is me and whatever I want to do is okay because I'm the only person I'm judging it against is, is me. And, you know, my customers will either like it or they won't, but that's okay too. So yeah, cocoon time is good too. Be more shark and get back in your cocoon. I think the message. <laughs> I want to go back and ask you a thing about TikTok. You said you and your son are going to create a series on TikTok? Yeah. So my, my son is, he, he's, you know, he's 10 and he's very anti-social media in the way that the next generation kind of is. So he's like, whenever I want to post anything, he's like, mom, don't put that on Instagram or Facebook. He's not remotely interested in having a Facebook account or anything like that. But TikTok is hilarious. You know, it's really funny. And we practice all the little songs. I don't know. There's one called, I won't go into it, but I'll I'll send it to you afterwards. I started doing the hand movements. And it's just a fun thing for us to do together. And I think, you know, with the TikTok thing, I would at least recommend people go on and try and get their brand name because it'll be gone. And we don't know where TikTok Mm -hmm. is. Like people, you know, I remember people 10 years ago poo-pooing Facebook and 15 years ago poo-pooing website. Who knows? And I don't want to be a boomer. I don't, want, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm not doing TikTok. It's so millennial or whatever. I want to stay in touch with pop culture and with the youth and with my son. And that, you know, because that keeps me young. It gives me new ideas, keeps me enthusiastic, makes me creative. So I recommend you go and have a play, but just a play. It doesn't have to be an integral part of your business content marketing strategy. It's just go right. play and have fun because isn't that what we are as creatives, what we want to be? Right. You know? So yeah, have a play, I think. Well, there's a big takeaway from this episode. If you have not created anything on TikTok, if you haven't created at least your account on TikTok, go there so no one else will take your name and do some really bad stuff with it. (laughs) Claim your land during the land rush while it's good. Because I remember way, way back in the day when people were buying McDonald's.com, you know, just to have the URL because then McDonald's would come knocking on your door with a check for $50,000. Or exactly. a million or several million. I because. have to be the, the Kate Toon, unfortunately, because Kate Toon oh had gone. Gosh. Even though I was an early adopter, I wasn't early enough. So. Oh, well, but the, the whole thing with that is I love the fact that you are the Kate Toon. <laughs> and it's not just a garden variety Kate Toon. I am <laughs> the Kate Toon, the one of one. And that's actually <laughs> not a bad thing to be as a personal brand. So once again, I'm talking with Kate Toon of Sydney, Australia. Her website is katetoon.com. Is that right? That's right. Check her out. Get on her email list and definitely link to her on LinkedIn as well. Get to know her, follow her, because if nothing else, she will be a completely out of your box view at things that you aren't thinking about and styles. And I'm going to say this. I'm sorry. This probably is not correct coming from an older white male, but what a great female role model, because I'll be honest with you, my feed is full of women doing the uh, kind of um, confetti blow. Yes. A confetti blow LinkedIn Barbie. Hi, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. And if you want to see what authenticity is in terms of our personal brand, using video, using style and stuff like that, check out Kate Toon. That's Kate with a K, Toon with two O's. Uh, <laughs> 
I, I don't know how I'm, you I'm it. more cabbage patch kid than than Barbie, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. And Tune is T-O-O-N. Check out her hot copy podcast with Belinda Weaver because that's especially great for anyone who has to write copy. And let's face it, we all do now. Highly recommended there. What other things would you like to recommend from your vast empire of Kateness? Uh, I think just head to the Kate Teen site and find your way. I've got memberships, courses, podcasts, downloadables, and some fun groups on Facebook. Like I do have a lot of fun on Facebook. So you can join that Kate Toon group and, and make up for the people who left because I changed the name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Once again, I love talking with Kate and I'm, you know, you're one of my friends. I'm sorry. You're you going to be, you're going to be back on and probably in about six months. No, actually, I would love to invite you back on when you release your book so we can actually that. talk about your book, maybe read some of the stuff in it, etc. cetera. So uh, look for Kate coming back sometime in 2020 around the June, July timeframe, maybe sound yeah, good. good. Yeah. And you'll be on, you'll be on my podcast too. So we'll, we'll see you then. Well, fantastic. Again, Kate Toon, love you, babe. I'm D.P. Knuton for the Nonfiction Brand Podcast in Nonfiction Brand Versity, and she is... Hey, Toon! And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye.